I'm building a 112 scale dollhouse. This miniature is based on a Sears kit house, model 107. Sears kit houses were sold between 1908 and 1942. This is similar to what the outside of the house will look like. And here's the floor plan. I've turned the floor plan on its side so you can get a better idea of what the house will look like. Here's the house in relation to the floor plan. This window is where the living room will be. And this window is where the kitchen will be. So here's the model. This wall shows the door into the living room and the living room window. From the front porch porch you'd go through the front door into the living room or parlor as my grandparents called it. The wall that I'm going to be building today spans the whole length of the house and is represented here by the red line. The window would be located here. It looks from the kitchen out onto the front porch and I need to put in two doorways. One door will enter into the kitchen from the living room and the other door will go from the living room into the bedroom. Let's add some orange lines which represent the rest of the walls in the house. Here we can see where the living room will be located and in the front of the house is the kitchen. This will be the bedroom. The bedroom's gonna have a closet and there's a pantry off the kitchen. I'll leave a link in the description to the video I made about pantries in these old houses. Check it out after this video. And finally, the front and back porches to the house. The house will look similar to this one although it will be much smaller than this house. The scale model house in full size would actually only be 500 square feet. The wall assembly will look like this with a window looking onto the front porch from the kitchen and two doorways leading from the living room. One leading into the kitchen and one leading into the bedroom. Today we normally wouldn't have a bedroom off the living room. However, some of the designs in these older houses built around the 1910s are a little bit different from the way we build houses today. Open concept wasn't really a thing back then. Smaller rooms with doors were more popular because you could close the doors to the smaller rooms and heat them more easily. You'll also take note this house has no bathroom. Many of the early Sears kit houses were designed without bathrooms. Sears sold these houses through their catalog. They'd be shipped by rail car and would arrive in 30,000 pieces. The customer would assemble the houses themselves which took about three months. The customer would be responsible for assembling the house, building the foundation and the kit would contain all the wood, nails, paint, doors, windows and trim needed to build the house. Electrical, plumbing and heating systems would be an additional charge. The first step is to measure the length of the beam required to build this wall. The length of this wall is 21 inches and because it's a 112 scale model that would be a 28 foot beam in reality. I don't have a table saw, so I'm gonna use my circular saw to cut the wood. I'm gonna leave about an extra inch because I need to make sure I get the wood true and square. I'll be using the bandsaw to cut the end square using the miter guide on the bandsaw. It's important to get your wood as square as possible and to get your cuts as exact as possible because when you're building to scale, if you're just a little bit out on your measurement, it, it makes a big difference to your model. So it's really important at this stage to try and be as accurate as possible. I set up a ripping fence on my bandsaw and now I'm going to cut the beams. You might want to sand the pieces of wood a bit to remove the loose fibers. I use a belt sander. Be gentle, it doesn't take much effort to clean up the wood when using a belt sander. It just gives it a bit more finished look. But the miniature wood beam will eventually be covered up. You can do this by hand with sandpaper if you don't have a belt sander. Check out my other video about how to create small boards for your miniatures. I'll leave a link in the description. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. As a new YouTuber, it really means a lot to me when someone actually likes one of my videos. It really makes my day. And if you're already subscribed to my channel, I just wanted to tell you, well, I think you're awesome. With the wood now cut to length, I'm going to lay out the wall assembly. I need to mark in where the doorways will be situated. I'm cutting the bottom beam. I need to cut out the areas where the doorways are located.
Using glue, I glue the miniature wooden studs into place. Be sure to use a square to make sure you have all the pieces of wood at a right angle. You don't want any errors and you want your model to be as true and as square as possible. This is really important when building miniatures. I'm using bar clamps to hold everything in place until the glue dries. I'm gluing up the other portion of the wall assembly. Again, using bar clamps and making sure that the wood is at perfect 90 degree angles. Wipe off any excess glue. Assembling this wall actually took me several days because I had to make sure the glue dried before I could continue assembling the next section. As you can see, the wall's starting to take shape. I just have to put in some more wall studs and create the opening for the window. I purchased these windows and doors in 112 scale off the internet. I think they look pretty good. They look fairly close to what actually would have been used in a house from the 1910s. I like this window because it actually opens and closes. The window slides up and down just like the real thing. Lay the wood on either side of the window to make sure you get the opening to the exact width. In the final portion of the build, I will be gluing the window into the wall. So be careful when you leave the window in the opening. Check to see that you don't have any excess glue on the window or on the window frame, otherwise you might have trouble getting it out of the opening. And you could actually damage the window if it accidentally gets glued in place and you try to remove it. You should be able to gently remove the window and replace it again. I'm adding a few nails just to add a bit of strength to the wall assembly. And there you have it, the wall assembly is complete and we can actually start to see what the interior and the outside of the house is going to look like. If you found this video interesting, why not check out this one? We'll see you in the next video.